Hi everyone, this is uh, Prati Kamasani and uh, today I'm going to talk about Power BI report design tips and tricks. Um, just to tell you, I don't have any slides for the session. All my content is going to be in Power BI. So this is uh, kind of exciting and also a bit nervous, but uh, let's see. I hope it all works out well. Um, so today in this session, I'm not going to talk about how to create Power BI reports or the storytelling. I, um, I think um, in a few months the, we have another session talking about that. Probably I would be joining that as well. And neither I'm not going to talk about how to create a data model, DAX or Power Query, nothing like that. This session is all about me talking about some report design tips and tricks. Um, so in today's agenda, well, first of all, it's been a while since I did any speaking. Like I think a whole pandemic, I haven't done much um, speaking. And um, so, and uh, during the pandemic, all the sessions are getting recorded. But I wanted my session to go for long. Even if you saw the recording, next time you want to come back to see the session. So I have a long list of tips and tricks. But in this session, I'm just going to talk a few from the below, starting from background images. So background images is, um, is something which can transform your Power BI reports really qu quickly and it can make a boring page into awesome. So if I go back to my session title, this is a Power BI page and uh, I can make this one amazing like this. So let's go back, actually restart the session again because I obviously I haven't done any introduction. So I, I already mentioned I'm going to talk about tips and tricks of the Power BI report design. And about me, I am Prati Kamasani. Um, actually, at this stage, I'm probably going to go to full screen. I'm Prati Kamasani. I, I am a group manager at Avanad. I run London Power BI user group. I'm an organizer for that, along with James Dales. And I'm a Microsoft MVP. I tweet at P. Kamasani and I blog at Prati.com. I tried YouTube. I think I failed, but I haven't given up yet. So um, that's still going to go ahead. And I like playing with Power BI. I like playing with Power BI data sets and I like playing with Power BI. So all the tips and tricks that you see here is comes out of those playing with Power BI sessions. So um, and today's agenda, as I mentioned before, I am going to talk about um, a few of the tips and tricks uh, from my long list of tips and tricks. So uh, there are 10 tips that I'm going to talk about and um, starting with background images. You already saw what background image can do. Uh, you can make a, a, a normal Power BI report, something really sleek very quickly. I'll talk about how to do it and things, but before I show you how to do it, let me quickly talk about not only look and feel what other things for background images can do. So the look and feel obviously and the performance background images are pretty good for the performance. For example, um, when you're creating a report, you want to keep like a 10 shapes to give that look and feel instead of keeping 10 shapes. If you probably keep a background image, that means your report is probably going to perform a tiny bit faster because there are there is one image to load instead of 10 shapes to render on the on the page. So it can improve the performance and um, there are wider options like various fonts and various images and various things that you can do. For example, if I go back to this page, as you can see in the background, I have this little Sweely thing happening. You cannot. Um, that is because my background is a, a GIF image. You can not only keep a static images, you can actually use GIF images. I don't know how many use cases are there for the GIF images, but everyone likes a little bit of moving things on the on the Power BI. So you could uh, you could not only that, like you could add different fonts that are not available in in Power BI. So there are various options that you can do. And uh, the other really good thing about uh, background images is it's easy to maintain the consistency among your organization. What I mean is like, for example, you have a Power BI report and you want your slices to be always on the top or always on the left or like, you know, you wanted your logo to always be there. 
Maybe you could create your background images following all those rules your organization want and uh, distribute among your Power BI developers. So that way it's easy to keep the consistency. And also remember, it is, yes, it's good to have those kind of background images already created for you, but feel free to change them once in a while. Otherwise, somebody like me comes there and uh, find it, uh, oh no, there is no, it's, there is no creativity angle here. But um, yeah, background images maintains the consistency. So let me just go back and have a quick look at uh, how I did these background images. So there are various ways you could do the background images. For this one, what I did is I used Canva. I basically created my slides in Canva. And uh, for example, this is the probably the most coolest one is I just added a few images into my Canva. It's, it's a free software. You could go for the paid version, but it's a free one. And I just saved it. I downloaded it as a GIF and I go to my Power BI desktop. Then I go to my About Me. Then there is this little paint option there. You could go and add your background image. Then you could check, for example, if I remove the transparency, as you can see, there is nothing there because all the things that you see there is coming from my background image. And um, whenever you upload the background image, for example, if I'm creating a new page. And if I add a new image. And then, for example, let's go for that one. And if I put it to fit, so well, usually what happens is it always comes with the transparency 100%. And every single page you create, that's what it happens. But you can control that by going to your theme here and go to customize current theme. And when it opens, you could go to your page go to page background, change the transparency. This way, next time when you create a new page, it won't be uh, that 100%. So there you go, it's uh, two tips in one tip. Um, and there is other things that you can do is uh, you could also use PowerPoint. So you could use PowerPoint, you could create your backgrounds in the PowerPoint and you could save it as an image and use that as a background. And the backgrounds are not only for your whole page. You could also use the backgrounds for like a, you could create a little shape and add few images on that and use this as a export this as an image and use that as a background behind your other things. That will take me back to my slides. Well, not my slides back to my Power BI and let's go back to full screen. Let me go back to my agenda. So that takes me to my next tip, which is buttons. So buttons are like a, my favorite. I think probably buttons is probably I use most compared to any other functionality in Power BI. Why? Because it's like a, I could do so many things with buttons and my favorite favorite button is a blank button. For example, if we just look at this is I how I'm navigating between all these things. What I have in the background is a background image. On the top, I have buttons. So, but when the user look at it, I actually have a little tooltip to provide that click here to follow link, but I could even disable that. But we are already very familiar. We're like, okay, this is agenda. Okay, probably I just have to click on that. So this is buttons, I click on it. And that takes me to this one. So blank button is what enables that. I'll show you how to add buttons and things in a bit. I will here what I want to show is what are the different possibilities with the buttons. So for example, you can create clickable cards. Let me show you one of the Power BI report I've designed and uh, whenever it opens up. And what it gives me is by using the Power BI and uh, uh, the buttons in the Power BI, what I could do is I could create this kind of a clickable a KP, a key metrics. For example, if you look at this, what I have here is I have key metrics and I have a little label saying click cards to see the details. I, I have so many, I worked with many clients who asks me this question. It's like a, you have a dashboard, you're showing a key metric on it. 
what is that key metric is leading to? I want to see the details of that key metric and you can achieve that by using a blank button. So now what I'm doing is I clicked on that blank button and now that is showing me this extra information related to the blank button. So I click on this one. It's it shows me more information and I click on the cross and it goes back. So this gives me that kind of navigation is because of those blank buttons and um, as I just mentioned, navigation blank buttons or buttons can also help us to do the navigation in the Power BI. So for example, I'm going to show you one more example. This um, taking a quite bit of time to load, but if I go to this one, so here what I'm using is again, I'm using the buttons on a background, but what it's giving me is a, I could use my buttons to create the navigation. The navigation, it doesn't have to be like this. I could create static buttons and I could create uh, some kind of navigation um, on, on, the, on this. For example, if I go here, I'm using the just usual default buttons and I'm adding a bit of navigation by using the buttons. I could, I could do app kind of look and feel. So for example, when the user is using interacting on your Power BI model, we can create, we can give them bit kind of app kind of feel. For example, over here, what I have here is that they have various buttons and I, we can do in the Power BI, we could achieve that kind of moving effect in Power BI by using the buttons. So let me show you how to create a quick button. So for example, if you go back here and I could just go to insert and a button. It's it's that simple. It just clicks the button and you once you go on the button, you could enable the text for example here. And. Test. So there you go, I have the button. Many things people actually forget to do are probably um, forget. Uh, it's not forget. I think it's more of like, you know, probably don't decide, don't notice it. Let me actually increase the transparency so it makes a bit more. So, so for example, here, what you have is the buttons has a different states. So this is the default state. On, ho on hover, I want to change my font color to purple. So now when I hover over it, the color changes. I could do the various things like, you know, when I, I want to fill it, but I want to fill it only when I hover over it. So maybe I want to fill something lighter. So now when I hover over it, there you go, the, the color changes. Having this kind of making the tiny bit of effort on your buttons, what it gives you is that kind of extra effect, that kind of app kind of feeling. And um, when the user is, act, you have 10 buttons on it. User may not know what to do it, but probably if you have this kind of hover over effect, what it does is the it helps the user to, okay, there is something happening. There is, I could probably go and click on it because we all are already used to that kind of feel from the mobile apps or web reports, or web pages and things like that. So that's kind of what um, buttons enables you to do. And it's not limited, as I mentioned, like it's like there are so many uh, possibilities there. Just like you look at various things and most of the times you could achieve that in Power BI using the buttons. So that's um, that's our next trick or tip. Let me go back to full screen and go back to my agenda. And that gives me talking about many more. So what else we can do with the buttons is we could add other things into the buttons and we could use the shapes, images and icons and do various things with that. Why? Because is Icons are kind of essential when it comes to visual experience. As I was saying, because we are already very familiar with icons, it's very simple things like, you know, when you go to uh, toilets, you have two doors which looks exactly same, but having a little icon on the top is what directs you, which is what. The same logic works on the report page as well. You have several tabs, several things, but placing a little icon is kind of differentiates. For example, if you're talking about currency, you have you have number of sales or total value in pounds and you have total value in euros. 
But instead of writing a big label saying total value in pounds and total value in euros, you could probably just keep a pound symbol and a euro symbol, and it actually looks much nicer. And the user can understand very quickly instead of reading the long label. And uh, yeah, so there are many uses um, for that one. And also it saves the space, the real estate on your report. So, but always remember whenever you are adding these buttons or these shapes or images, any objects that you put on the reporting page, that means it takes longer to load, more rendering time. So be mindful of how many you want to add. And is it something you could probably achieve in a background image instead of adding it as a, a shape or image or something like that? So number there are obviously there are different resources um, there to get the icons. I use flat icon a lot. I quite I use the unit charts quite a bit and you could always use PowerPoint as well. So let me quickly go back to PowerPoint to show how we can do that. So that brings me back to this um, this one where I was talking about. About uh, backgrounds here, what I did is in PowerPoint, what you could do is you could go to insert and you could add whatever the icons you want. You could basically use the this one. You could save it as an image, save it as a picture and import that into your Power BI. Or you could actually create a little bit of cards like this. And on top of this card, you can keep your metric. And on top of your metric, you could add a blank button. So that's how you could have that kind of a clickable buttons where user can click on it and it, you know, it opens up the uh, some more information related to that one. So for example, if I go back to my Power BI again, is uh, just like how we added button, we could add different shapes as well. So let me add one shape. And also let me add image. Um, let's go for the GIF again. It won't be a GIF anymore. Um, it will be a static one. So there are a few things that we need to remember is when you click on the button. And when you go to action, you can do various things, but when you click on an image and go to action, you cannot do everything. For example, you cannot do grill through and things like that. So the same thing goes with the but uh, with the shape as well. You cannot do all the things. You can only do certain things. So that's um, that's what it is about um, about images, shapes and buttons. And basically what you can do is you can overlay those things and you could achieve a lot more things. We'll we'll see more things related to the those things. The next thing I want to talk about is the empty characters. So empty characters are basically they're empty. They are genuinely empty characters, but um, what it means is you could use empty characters at various places. You could use them in titles, you could use them in labels, you could use them in the report page titles. For example, if I if I remove this, if you see this this page, it has a bit of indent in the beginning. And um, I did that by adding empty character. So when it comes to useful is um, again, when you go when I go to client places, there are many times what they want is like, a, OK, we have a one landing page which takes them to several things, but we have another main page which also takes them to the several thing. Instead of having two Power BI models, you could have one Power BI model with a tiny bit of indent to kind of group them to show, OK, this is my level one and there are level two. So this may not be the requirement all the time, but they, I've seen the requirements like that, and that's where the empty character works amazingly. And also it works with that kind of a look and feel, um, the app kind of look and feel. For example, here, what I am doing is I am adding the empty characters just before the button. So to get the empty character, I will just let me open this. So I'll show you what I've been doing is I will just basically. I create this. I copy this. I go back to my Power BI and this is my. 
button I've created before. So let me indent to the left. And now on hover, I want to change my test text to, to something different. OK, like that. So now when I see this, when I hover over, I have that little indent. So that gives me that kind of like a behind that I could add an image on the background of uh, on the back of that and that gives me that kind of app look and feel that I have over here is where when the user is gonna on top of that button it's kind of a gives that kind of effect that we usually see in the websites like a, this is an example that's where I saw that is like a giving that kind of a look and feel like app kind of look and feel and uh, yeah, as I said, you could use them everywhere, anywhere. Like you could use them in the titles, labels, or report page titles, and things like that. Okay. Yes. There's a question here. I think it, it will fit well in. It's it's what uh -huh. the one you did just before. Um, so the question is, can you use the QR4 Office add-in for PowerPoint to create buttons or links to URLs? What uh, QR? Oh, QR code. No, QR for Office add-in. I have so no QR, clue what that the, is. The number four and Office. Oh, I you don't know. know what it is. <laughs> okay, that's good. Thank you. Sorry, <laughs> I would love to know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, empty characters. We done with empty characters. So let me go to full screen. And back to agenda. So the next one is somewhat related to the empty characters, which is the transparent color. Again, this is something I quite like um, about transparent color. And again, there is nothing super amazing about it except it's transparent. And the color code for the transparent is the one you see there. Uh, I don't know how many Fs are there, six Fs and double zero. So what this gives you is, um, I'll show you one of the example. If it lets me, oops. OK, that um, didn't go according to the plan. Um, but I can show you just a second. OK, it's loading. Internet is always slow when you're actually presenting. So this is another report I've, I've, I was playing with. And what I've done is, for example, if you see, I have a little light bulb here. When I hover over it, I have this tooltip coming up. And how I've achieved that is it's a layer of the objects. First, I have an image. On top of image, I added a visual. I just added a key metric, one of the metric visual. Let me actually show you um, what I've done is it's. Um, as you could see, it is a card visual on the card visual. What I've done is I am using a for the data label. I'm using an, a color expression for this color. I am using the transparent color. So because it's transparent, you don't see the actual metric and what it giving me is when I hover over it, I could give I, I get this kind of tooltip effect. The same thing we could use at various places, not only on this one metric, you could do the things in like a for pretty much everything, except it doesn't work wherever there is no expression. It works only when we have uh, when we are using index. But you cannot really just go to Power BI. So let me go here and I cannot. I mean, it could surprisingly work now. But for example, here, if I go to more colors and I cannot go and. So I cannot really go there and type transparent color. But if I have an expression, 
by using the DAX, then I could use the transparent color. So that's basically how it works. Is like it does work, but it doesn't work at every place. It works in these at some cases. So that's what the transparent color do. Uh, but again, the transparent wherever it works with the uh, with DAX, you can do so many things. You could do that kind of hover over effects and uh, tool tips and things like that. Uh, let me go back to my agenda. So the next tip that we have is dynamic titles. I think dynamic titles is definitely not new. I think um, many people who have been working with Power BI, they have come across dynamic title. You could use DAX and uh, you could do dynamic title. So for example here, the one here, what it is, is this is my dynamic title. And behind the screen, what I have is a simple DAX to show based on whatever I select, I get the dynamic title. But this kind of dynamic titles are not only limited as a as a metric. You can also use the dynamic title for the other things, but let me show you over here. So when I change my parameter on the top, if you notice this table, my title disappeared. I don't have the title anymore. When I change it a tiny bit more, or maybe a bit more. So there you go. Now I have the dynamic title. So you can you can use these dynamic titles not only just to show the dynamic titles on the top of your visuals, but you could also use them in your actual titles in your visual visual. So let me show you what's happening here. So when I click on this visual, I have quite a few groups there. I could go to settings. I can go to title. And in here, I am using the text based on an expression, based on a field value. And that field value is the is a DAX measure. And based on my parameter selection, I'm getting the DAX measure. Because I am wherever, if I, if I don't want a title because I'm using it as a blank, that's why when I don't want to display a title, then it will actually doesn't show any title at all. So how this can be really useful is, for example, I mean, this is here I'm using a table, but at the same thing you could use it on a key metric or like a or a KPI, things like that. And for example, your key metric is showing a negative value. And you want to add a bit of warning, or maybe it's showing negative value. It could be there uh, that is a data discrepancy or something like that. If you want to add a, that little bit of warning um, on top of your title, on top of your key metrics and things like that, because you don't want a title all the time, but you want a title only sometimes. So this is when it, it kind of works really nice. Of course, you could use just another visual, but this way you are not really using another object on your page. You are basically using the title from from the actual visual. So this that's um, another tip for the dynamic title. Please remember all of them because at the end I'm going to ask questions about um, what was your favorite one. Um, <laughs> um, sorry, if you uh, have a question. Just, just, yeah, no. Yeah, well, it's not a question really, it's a comment. It's just asking you when you are, uh, sometimes if you could uh, maybe zoom in once in a while. Good question, yes. <laughs> I should have keep kept my zoom in open, but uh, let me do that. OK, let me try. I'll, I'll, I'll try. Maybe I could just zoom in on the Power BI. Sorry, I didn't think about that for some reason. No. OK, so the next one um, is the the so the dynamic titles and the next one is the conditional formatting. So again, conditional formatting is also not very new for the people who already been working with the Power BI. So um, conditional formatting is very good to highlight the values, the highlight the values, the specific values on your reports and things like that. I mean, I've done a, a session before about the Power BI tips and tricks that it's I think it's on the YouTube. So you could see how various different types of conditional formatting available, like you could add unit charts, you could add symbols and all those things. 
But here, I want to show you something different um, than I've shown before. So the conditional formatting is not only limited within a table, like, you know, for example, here in this case, I could go to, let me actually show here. I could go to my table and I could click on the parameter value and I could enable the, I could choose the conditional formatting. And there are various options available, but the conditional formatting is not only there, you could con do the conditional form formatting in other ways. For example, again, the title. The title, if you go here, let me go to the next page. Suddenly my PC became super slow. Is on the same table that I was using before. I could go back to the here, go to conditional, sorry, not conditional formatting. I could go to title and uh, not only at the text, I could also use the expressions at um, at the font color or, or the background color. So in this case, I'm using the expression at the font color. Again, based on a field value on an expression. So what it does is, for example, if I change my value a bit different, this is my dynamic title, and maybe let me change it a bit further up. I don't really remember the, what was the expression. So as you could see here, I have I changed my title color based on the whatever the value I have. Again, this is you could use the same similar case I was talking before. If you want to add a bit more dynamic functionality to your reports based on your key metrics value, you want to see show your data differently, your page differently. You could you could achieve this. And there is other things I've also done here is if you noticed. If I go further down, I have my value as green. And if I go a bit more right, I don't have any value that's showing it. So basically what's happening here is I have a shape. So let me, okay, this is not letting me select it. Let me change the color so I know the difference. So what I have here is it's first of all, it's a group. Let me ungroup. And then I have a little bar here, but it is nothing but a shape. And for the shape, I am using an expression for the background color. Again, similar thing based on the field value. I'm, I'm choosing the my color and I grouped them into a metric to show as a key metric and based on how my measure value is, it's going to show differently. Sometimes I want to highlight my key metrics and sometimes I don't want to highlight the key metrics. So that way, having this kind of a, using the conditional formatting, you can control what to show and what not to show. Most of the times the conditional formatting, you could use it for the font colors as well. But uh, adding a little bit of icons or shapes and things like that, it basically adds that extra impact to, to your report design. So I'll switch back here. Click. All right. So the next one I have in my agenda is talking about uh, over here is outlines. Outlines is also another really nice tip that I mean, probably outlines is something I kind of use quite often is outlines is um, so base Basically, pretty much every single table or a card visual or 
you have a slicer or all these things, they all have the outline available. For example, if I see this table and this table, what I have, the table on the right has is the outline. If you see this slicer and this slicer, what this slicer has is the outline. What happens with the slicers is when you increase the font, it increases the font and it makes it basically makes your slicer look really cluttered, especially when you have a lot of items in your slicers and you have a really scrollable slicer and there is a very little space between each slicer, each item in within the slicer. But that's when using the outline, it can be really useful. So let me go to my outlines. So what I have here, I'll quickly show you how I've done that. It's actually really simple when you think about it. Is um, what I have here is, let me click on this, my slicer. And I go to items. In the items, I basically, in a, I went to outline and I chose a frame. And afterwards, I go to my outline color. I use that same as the background color. So same as the background color of your visual. So in this case, my background color of the visual is, is white. So that's why I chose white. It is, it is important because when you go to full screen as well, you want it to look exactly the same. So that's why using it as a same color is. So if I just change the color, to something different, you will understand the difference. So there you go. So using that background color, same as the border, I it added that extra space. That way it gives me that kind of a space between a sparse to look of my slice, my slicer. The same thing can be applied to a table as well. It's like uh, I'm doing the same similar thing here. I am changing, I changed the I just have to find out where the outline is. I think it's in grid. Yeah, I changed the outline color and let me put a different color there as well. So you would see why I got that extra space is because I basically increased my outline weight and I got that extra space. It's like, um, it's it comes, quite handy and especially in the tables, not only outline, if you could increase the row padding. By default, the row padding is very um, one or two, but if you increase the row padding and let me change this outline to white again. So when you increase the row padding, you could see the the same table, this table and this table, the same data, same font, but now my table on the right looks a lot more clear and neat compared to the table on the left. That is just because by adding a bit of padding or by adding a bit of um, um, outlines to your visual. I think it works amazingly for the slicer. So let me go back to my, this one again. So that's another tip about outlines. And um, now the next one is Power BI templates. Power BI templates is again, it's, um, I don't know, for some reason, I don't really, I go and work with so many clients as a consultant, and very rarely I come across people using Power BI templates. Power BI templates are really, really good. Is why? Because it's first of all, it's really easy to create a Power BI template. For example, if I want to make this as a Power BI template, I could go to File and I could go to Save As. And I could choose Power BI template file and that's it. And that's how I create the Power BI template. And what happens with the Power BI template is when you create a Power BI template, it only exports the definition. It doesn't export the data. So what it means is all the images, all the background images you used, all the layouts you used, all the things like uh, all these theme files and all these things that you created, the, the transparency settings we did, 
those things can be exported, saved as a Power BI template. And next time, and next another developer or yourself, if you're creating another one, there you go. You could just use that one, and uh, it's a quick start. It pretty quickly you could already somebody already did all the work, or maybe you yourself you already did all the work. And also the other thing that um, is Power BI template is good is for the to maintain the corporate branding. Is like you could you could enforce within the organization all your Power BI reports to look like uh, follow the same format. For example, I see this um, again in many places is like a, in one report, the slicer is on the top and in the second page, the slicer is in the bottom and in the other page, there is a slicer here, there. It is very confusing for the user to even they have to look for where the slices are. And uh, but having this kind of a template, it's kind of forced the people to design in a particular way and you could add some in extra information to it like um, add some notes to your Power BI template. It's like this is how you want to create your Power BI table. This is how you want to do. And this is how icons you want to use within your template. So for example, and also you could do like, you know, for example here, what I have here is I have a light background template. I already added some of the icons. I also created some buttons is because Creating this kind of buttons with a hover effect and a little bar underneath and little bar onto the left, this kind of horizontal experience and things like that. It takes some time, but probably if you already created it, maybe just keep them everything in a template and uh, and save it as a template and share among your your colleagues so they don't have to redo the work again. If you want your I work in Avanad, we are, we are orange. So if I want um, all my Power BI reports to have this kind of button, then next time I don't have to create the whole thing. I just copy this already grouped button and a bar, and I would use that one when I'm creating my Power BI report. And it's not only um, you could create different things like, you know, you could do dark one, a light background, dark background, so that like, you know, your users are actually having that kind of consistency. And this also helps when it um, when you're working with the templates, um, sorry, not the templates, uh, when you're working with mobile devices. For example, you could also create um, mobile layouts as well. Like, you know, you could make sure how that particular one looks on a mobile and um, I think when you're using the icons and things like that, they're really good when it comes to the mobile is you could create you could also show them like using something how it looks on a on a mobile like uh, now you could look at this. I mean, this is not really amazing experience, but you could show them like, OK, this is how it's going to look on the mobile and uh, they could it gives them the opportunity to choose the templates um based on something which already there and it's a very easy way to do it and very easy way to follow for the you uh, for the wider audience as well every other power bi developer who is creating the reports so the next one i have in my i keep going to that boring agenda instead of using my amazing <laughs> one so the next one i have is the resources i mean this is not really a power bi trip uh sorry trip sorry tip and trick um but uh, this is very very useful i mean like if there is one slide you want to take a picture or a screenshot is this is uh, one page this is the one is uh, there are various places like uh, you could go and you could just search for things but i i like financial times financial times has amazing um um uh, really nice storytelling they are quite vast, but it's very nice when it comes to uh, really good, good ones. And uh, the other one I like is Dribble. What Dribble gives you is a, I mean, I use Dribble a lot. I think this is where I get most of my ideas when I'm working with my, with my open data data sets. Is like a, I go here and there are this amazing. Power BI dashboards, amazing dashboards, not Power BI dashboards, Power BI amazing other dashboards. But what it gives me is it gives me some kind of inspiration. For example, if you look at this, most of the things we have here 
we can achieve them in Power BI. Like, you know, these kind of icons, this kind of layout on the top by using the buttons. You could have these things again, and these kind of visuals are actually available in our in Power BI. So Dribble is a very good place to get the inspiration, inspiration to create your Power BI reports. And uh, if you want to understand how to, which visuals to use when you are creating the uh, report, is uh, that's when the um, Financial Times uh, works. So what Financial Times has is. So Financial Times has the visual vocabulary, so you could just Google it and you get it. And so what it gives has is based on your data type. For example, you have deviation or you are working with the ranking. So you could click on that and it gives you different type of chart types and uh, it gives you a bit of explanation about what the chart is, which, which which kind of things to show and things like that. And there, this is uh, a very good way to start. And also Financial Times publish their articles and their storytelling. You can observe the Financial Times storytelling and you can learn a lot from, from that storytelling. And the other thing is Power BI User Stories Gallery. Power BI User Stories Gallery has uh, so many. It has uh, so many gal items from people like me or from so many people. They publish the things to the data stories gallery. Pretty much everything is created in Power BI. Again, this is also very good inspiration when it comes to um, to understand what this Power BI is capable of. The last one is uh, my blog. Um, is I do quite a bit of um, well, I used to. I think I'm still kind of creeping up. I have a couple of examples here as well. Again, I use a lot of. Um, I get inspired by using seeing other people's work and then I start going and playing with it. So there are various places where you could go and um, and work with the play with it and that's how you can do it. The the last fee, um, tip that I would give is the feedback. Try to find somebody like it could be your partner or your boyfriend or your colleague or your daughter. Like I sometimes show my reports to my daughter and uh, she is an uh, amazing critic. So she she tells me like uh, she literally tells me if I care, if I don't understand this report, no one can understand it. So she's like, I, I mean, a, visual, a visualization should be something I should be able to understand without you explaining me. So that is what it is. Um, don't get probably daughters may not be amazing uh, giving the feedback because uh, she's super critic, but get somebody who is who can give you constructive feedback is like a talk through the show. Show your reports to somebody, your colleague or somebody and um, get that feedback. They and see if they can understand the report you just showed. Most of the times, as I said, is most of the times a report should be able to Self-explanatory. You don't have to explain what your report is showing. If that is the case, then the report is not great. And also, what I what is your story that can achieve by getting the feedback from somebody or by explaining, like, okay, my report is showing this, and um, so that's pretty much what I did with my previous portfolio item. Is like, I showed my report to my partner, and then it was like he asked me like so many questions. I was like, oh my god, this is not what I wanted to and then I had to redo the so that gives that kind of um, feedback is really, really great. And the next thing is have fun. I think uh, having fun is so important when it comes to designing the reports is that's when you can come up with. I mean, that's how I came up with all these ideas uh, is like a they are not amazing, but they they are like pretty good because it it makes your reports stand out just by adding few things it can make your report stand out so these are some of the tips and tricks uh, from my long list of tips and tricks so please let me know what your what is your favorite tip and trick in the chat and uh, 
and let me know if you have any questions. Any questions, Asuka? Yes, there are. Let me just. So there was a uh, clarification what this QR for for QR for office adding is. It is actually to make QR codes. So. Uh, oh right. Okay. So, uh, so the, what was the question again? The first question. You, uh, the question yeah. before. Can you use QR for Office add-in for PowerPoint to create buttons or links to URL URLs? So yeah, the answer is um, yes and no. I mean, you cannot just put the QR, QR code here and it won't work. Um, the, it won't carry the link with it. But what you can do is you, for example, if this is your QR code, you could go to action and you could choose web URL and type your web URL there. So that way, when they click on that button or shape or image, in this case, I would expect a QR image. So they could click on that QR image and that takes them to that web URL. So that's basically what I'm doing in, in buttons over here, is what I have here is, I go here, I have a web URL. So I click on that and that takes them to the URL. Yeah, and as far as I remember, there's also a, a, a type uh, which is QR code. So if you had a, like a, the code behind the QR in, a, in your data, you yeah. can, uh, I, have, I, haven't, I haven't tried it myself, but I know, that, I know it exists. Uh, yeah, there is a QR um, barcode category. Yeah. Or, uh, you need to have it in your data then, you know, not, not that. Yeah. Know, yeah, it it has to come up as a barcode in the as a data type, not as an image. I think. Yeah. yeah. So um, another question was, uh, so how do you how to think about choosing a desirable background slash theme color for a dashboard in in various steps? So what's the thought process behind it? The thought process behind it is, um, I mean, like a, so whenever I I'll be super honest is uh, whenever I am stuck with the like uh, what I wanted to do or things like that. For example, if I go back to dribble. So for example, over here is um, this is one of a really good example and I have a I have I cannot really log into pin interest because I forgot my this is my <laughs> alien <laughs> browser. But um, I have a long list of dashboards or images, visuals and things like that. What I do is I just pin everything in there and then when I am working through, I just scroll up and down and I see what uh, what I like. I, I have a business use case and I have this thing. So when I'm working with the client, most of the time client comes with the theme file. Otherwise, if the client, client doesn't have a theme file, what I use is probably I use, um, this is my favorite uh, place. So HTML colors from an image. So what I do here, for example, if I go back here and if I copy image address, and let me paste it here, go. Usually it works. This case probably not. Let me try something else. So if I go to let me, instead of GIF images, probably it works with the GIF too, but I'm not sure. So if I go to this one, so if I liked this yellow, I can hover over it and this gives me that color. I if I like this, um, I could hover over it, it gives me that color. So if I see something that is looks nice and it telling me nice things. This is how I do it is I basically hover over it, get this color palette and create my theme file. Before I used to create theme files differently, but nowadays the theme files here is amazing. So I just go to my customized current theme. As you can see here, I have that's what I did is I just uh, pasted my color codes and uh, I, I do that based on that. So I basically get inspiration by looking at other other people's work. I steal like an artist. <laughs> My favorite yeah, so 
Why try to invent the wheel when someone else has it? You know, that's, that's exactly, exactly. <laughs> and um, uh, the and the, I think there's people who actually studied all this, like to create these things and stuff. So that kind of helps. And I do a bit of painting. I'm interested in taking pictures and doing painting and things like that. So maybe that's why that helps me as well, probably going for the right colors or things like that. But um, yeah, the, the, I basically just crawl through the pin interest and get it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And so there was a couple of people asking for uh, some small clarification. So one uh, ask, you know, can you show the hover over light bulb again? And, and, and what, how, how did you do that? Yes, so where is the hover over light bulb? <laughs> Let me go to my other workspace, portfolio. I know why it's asking for that bit more. So what I did here is, let me edit, the, edit this thing. So what I have here is I have a, a visual behind the visual i have a just an image so on the visual what i have is i have a number of companies and here i have a tooltip so in the tooltip i chose the report type as a report page and uh, i i created a page called government comment so i already have this report page created for me and i controlled what I'm going to show on this report page. So because if I go back to this, my report, I'll quickly talk about what I'm trying to do is basically what I'm trying to do is how pandemic impacted UK companies data. So this these are this is real data and these are the companies. This is a year on year in in the UK, the number of companies registered which are active. Oh, well, actually all of them not only active, so if you can see in April, there is a minus 10% compared to the last year, 2019. Well, this is only 2019, 2020 data. So in this last year is previous year is 2019. And in the next step, what I want to show is I want to show only April data as a trend line. So I'm showing the April data trend line. This is not the complete story. I'm not telling the whole story because I don't know the data well. My aim is to just show what is possible. But at the same time, what happened generally overall government wise, I want to show in those three months, a month before and a month after April, what PM said. So I found this data set where what government said, PM said the lockdown is going to finish or PM said um, the past of the peak is over. So I want to give that bit of effect. So for that reason, what I did is I already filtered out my data to show only those three months. And if I go back to the report again, and if I go here, and data label, but removed my color, it shows me the color. Um, it shows it ha it actually has a metric on it. But what I did is actually let me fit it to page, fit it to it so you could see a bit better. So I actually have a number because the tooltip works only on top of a when there is a value. If there is no value, it doesn't show the value. So for that reason, what I did is instead of using the color, I am using the the transparent color on top of that. Now I don't remember the measure name, but anyway, I'm using the transparent color. So even though there is a metric, I cannot see the metric, but my tooltip still works. So that's basically what's happening. I'm actually doing something else as well in this one is, uh, for example, here, when I select July, my tooltip appears and then I can hover over it and it shows exactly in July what PM said. So it kind of gives me, OK, the retail sales is where and I could go over it and I could see what happened, how the retail sales has been in the 2019 compared to 2020. As you can see, obviously, 
mail orders has been increased amazingly during the pandemic. So stuff like that is, um, yeah, basically that's what I'm doing with the light bulb. Okay, thank you. Um, and the the one other question was uh, how do you how did you create the empty character? It was one who missed that part. Okay, so the empty character is. So empty character is from this website, so it's called emptycharacter.com mm. and uh, here I went, I copied the empty character, just control C and uh, I go to my Power BI and like here I just copied that empty character and kept it in front of my text but I kept it on on hover so that gives me that effect or even here is I just go in front of it and paste instead of once I pasted a couple of times so that I have a bit more space. It works in uh, in various ways like um, it's, it's pretty good. I think I find it pretty interesting. Yeah, I've seen it sometimes also used in uh, in tables where you have a, like a traffic light or some kind of an indicator, and um, where you mm -hmm. just want to have the header of that column being nothing. Yes, because exactly. Because you don't want so, it to yeah. be the name of the measure, which is a long, maybe a long name. Yeah, yeah. That's so it. then you could use it as a table name, table col a column name. Column, yeah. So I've seen it in the yeah. like, it's, a, it's a really neat trick. Uh, what I used to do to get this was to use some kind of Go into fonts and you know finding there. So this is much easier. Empty character. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because in the beginning, Power BI used to allow space as yeah. a column name. Yeah. And now it doesn't. Yeah. So yeah. you have to find an alternative way to do that thing. So that's how. That's why I came across this empty character. Is exactly for the same purpose. Is to have the column not to have the column names. So yeah. instead of using the space, I was using the empty characters that way that was working. Yeah. Cool. So you know, there's actually a question here. Is space uh, is not the same as is it not the same as empty character, but it, you know, well, it, it's not because an empty character is something. Uh, yes, exactly. So, some, so for example, it, yeah, go on, sorry. No, it's okay. So uh, go ahead. Yeah, so for example, if I use on hover, if I remove this and use space here, of course I added space, right? But it doesn't show there, but empty character shows. Yeah. It's like a, for example, it, all, it truncates all these, all the space, but when I keep an empty character, it shows. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so. There's another question here. Do you mm -hmm. have an example where you have offered the option of color scheme for entire reports, like light versus dark or warm versus cool colors? I don't have an example of that in this Power BI model, um, but I do have. Uh, I've done that before. It's um, it's quite nice, but it feels like a lot of work. Yeah. So, but uh, I don't. I don't have one now. No. Oh. So uh, when, there are various ways you can do it. It's like a. I mean, I've seen people doing it differently. You could create two report pages and use the page navigation or bookmarks to move between those two, or you could use a heavy DAX based where if you choose this one, go for that, do this. But uh, I don't know. It's just. <laughs> I feel like a. I feel like um, a report is is not really it's not an application, even oh. though we are trying to create it as an application. Yeah. I think the color scheme is something you should come right. It should be right the time. It may not be right, but if it's not right, it's not right. But yeah, yeah, you, you can create an uh, you can create a, a Power BI report that resembles it, but you you cannot really create an application. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, it's going to be a lot of work maintaining stuff like that. Exactly. I think that's why I'm a bit against um, having to switch between different theme files. I've seen actually, I think on the theme gallery, there is 
one. I don't um, remember exactly, but I think on the Power BI theme gallery, uh, not the theme gallery, custom um, reports, data stories gallery. Um, there are, I think they have seen one there, but again, it's, um, it, I think it, many things in Power BI, it's, it's preference. I like something, that's why I do it, but not everyone likes it. So I find it, all, all the things related to creativity are very, personal preference. Okay, so the last question is uh, the report you are using for it. Uh, is it shared somewhere or can you share it? Um, you can make I, it say no, it's okay. Yeah, I think no. <laughs> That's okay. I would say no because uh, yeah, yeah, no, no reasons. <laughs> no. I don't need to explain because, but yeah. Yeah, it's okay. Mm -hmm. And that was all the question. So, um, any last words? No, thank you so much. And uh, as I said, this was a session after almost a year. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm not a very good not seeing anyone. I'm I'm happy that I could at least see your face. <laughs> so, so, so that's good. But yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Yeah, thank you very much for uh, for uh, coming and showing this. You know, I, I learned a lot less always when I look at these sessions. And you know, and my strong my 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 design is not my strong thing. So I really enjoy these kind of sessions that help me pick up more things. And you know, I'm logical thinking, so these tip and trick they help me a lot. So thank you very much. Yes. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's a great combination. Somebody who can do the modeling and also the good <laughs> yeah. design. Yeah. So um, yeah, but it's a, it's a key skill for Power BI. Yes, it is. And uh, thank you everyone who attended. Um, the video will be posted on our YouTube channel in you know in a couple of days, so stay tuned for that. Uh, otherwise than that, thank you very much and enjoy the rest of uh, your day, evening, morning, or wherever the time is where you are. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.